Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another Sunday evening live stream. At least it's evening for me. Um, thank you to everyone who's joining in to watch me paint some black vipers. Now, these guys um, are the final conversion video that I've been working on for uh, as part of my Salamander Successors uh, conversion, guys. And this is the, the, the fourth one now. Um, so, yeah, these, these guys are uh, conversion that I've made here. This is part of it, and we're basically just going to be painting this guy in the stream. Let's get a bit more light, and there we go. So hopefully, everything is... I'm having a bit of a problem with the camera tonight, so I apologize if um, things start going in and out of focus, but nightmare. Anyway, so hopefully everything looks okay to you guys. If it doesn't, let me know, and we can, um, we can sort things out. Okay, so as always, I'm going to be painting this guy. I'm going to be explaining the paints that I'm going to be using, and as I'm doing this, then... Um, you can ask me questions and I'll answer them and we can just have a chat, hang out. Okay. So this model is, of course, the Black Vipers. Um, if you can tell by thumbnail, the main kind of scheme for these guys is black and red. So I'm going to tackle the black areas first. Um, I'm going to basically get all of these, uh, all of the armor kind of base coated and highlighted first and then move on to the details like the red and the metallics things like that. So I've, I've subassembled this as well. Um, we have um, the main kind of structure of the model here. We've got pretty much the same as a regular basic eliminator. We've just got a helmet in here from a Reaver kit. The, the main kind of conversions that I've done here have basically been among the weapons. Um, we've got a converted last talent here for the weapon, and we've got a separate power pack, and then the actual Space Marine power pack as well, slightly different as well. Um, I'm not going to go too much detail about how I've adjusted everything and why I've done it. Um, I'm kind of keeping it mainly for the conversion video, which will be obviously being released later this week. But yeah, um, yeah. So we're going we're going to be painting this guy, and uh, let's go. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use a, an airbrush here. Now it's mainly just because it's just simple and quick. Um, like I said, not everyone has an airbrush, but you can do things like um, dry brushing. I've done this kind of dry brushing technique in the future, in the future, in the past. So you can actually recreate this yourself with dry brushing technique. I'm just using an airbrush just to be straightforward. So let me just get set up here. Okay. So the first color I'm going to be using is, let's grab the final color first. Oh, I just had a bit of a nightmare before the stream. Just nothing was working, so I'm kind of a little bit flustered at the moment. I'm like, not got everything set up exactly how I wanted it, so um, I'm kind of keeping an eye um, on the comments on my phone, so hopefully it won't keep going in and out and uh, keep losing it. So, yeah, nightmare. Anyway, so using the airbrush here, um, the colors I'm going to go for are... Um, I was going to do some kind of spot highlights. So I'm going to start off with... Vallejo's black grey. So I hope that's in focus because I'm quite a way away from the computer and it looks in focus to me, so it isn't, I apologise. Um, and then I'm going to pop a little bit of thinner in there as well. Let's go thinner out. Of the drawer, cleaner. No, we don't need that, we need thinner. Okay, I'm just going to pop a little bit of thinner in there. I'm just using um, Vallejo thinner for this, just because I like to keep thinners to be the same brand that of the paint that I'm using. It's not, it's not for any particular reason. I just feel like if the thinner it has been formulated for a particular purpose or reason, then it's going to be for the paints that that company do. So make sure that's mixed up. And we're just going to drop a little bit into here. So I've kind of moved the compressor as far away as possible from the, uh, just a couple of drops in there, from the microphone. So hopefully you're not gonna have that annoying whirring sound in the background. So uh, it's quite a good microphone for that. Okay, let's bring in the model. Let's just mix that up first. So the consistency that I'm trying to get with this is usually, I mean, a lot of people say about the consistency of skim milk, but I'd say it's it maybe ever so slightly thicker, I'd say, personally. It's just what I go for. Okay, let's go. How can you make metallic red paint? Is it better to mix red with silver or gold or any shade of 
colour. Um, so personally, if I was going to make like a metallic red, I would go for a, uh, a technique that I actually used in the past on... Okay, I'm just going to get this chat on my computer now. It's actually set up now. Um, so I've used gold as a base colour and then I've kind of used some of contrast, some contrast paint over the top. And I found that to, to be really useful. Um, it creates that kind of nice kind of candy red colour. But there is, I think there's some reddish metallic colours now, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, that's what I go for. Okay, right. I'm just getting the chat open up on a screen near me. Hopefully it's going to work today. Let's see, I'm just going to test the spray, make sure this is all okay. Okay, let's see if the chat's start coming through. Okay, uh, that's good consistency. So with this, I'm going to try... There we go, perfect. It's all coming through on the screen. That's better. I can actually see what's going on there. Okay. So normally I disable the autofocus through a program that comes with my camera. But I actually think that the program isn't working, so I'm not sure if the autofocus is kind of going to mess things up here. I'm just going to do some really light kind of spot sprays. I'm going to mainly keep the black as black, obviously. I don't want to go too grey with this at this stage. I'm going to just apply some some very subtle spots just over these top areas of the model. Things like tops of the knees, things like that. Basically anywhere you would imagine the light to hit. Please, 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 Primus Vulcan Hastan. Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to tackle him, but I, I'm, I'm kind of going to wait until, um, until maybe we see a codex supplement for salamanders, just because I want to see if they do one and like an official model. Um, I've been stung by that before. I did those Necron Flayed one conversions a while ago, and then uh, Games Workshop. Oh due to release, they haven't released them yet, some uh, plastic flayed ones. So, so it's quite a subtle, I don't even know you can really see that on the camera very easily. It's very, very subtle. I didn't want to go too far with this first layer. I'm just going to just apply a little bit of a transition just so it's not as um, greater kind of step between the two. So that's, I'm not sure what to go for the cloak yet though. That's the only thing. I mean, I was thinking just going black, keeping it nice and straightforward. I'm not 100% I'm not sure. Um, I want to see what someone would do about the snake on the pauldron. Yeah, that's going to be a difficult one, I think. It's going to be possibly a freehand. I might have to practice that before I actually go ahead and try it on this model, but um, we shall see in the future. Um, okay, so I've got a little bit of... I might come back to the cloak. I think I'm going to keep it as black for the time being, um, so I'll treat it as if it is going to be painted black. And then if not, then I've got some pre-shading. Okay, that'll do for now. Let's just bring in the some of the other components here. So the backpack is actually red. So the red the guys normally have a red backpack. So I'm going to leave that for the time being. Um, the weapon is black, however, as is the arm. So we're going to paint this black as well. Okay. Red on cape with a black dragon or snake would fit the chapter thing. Yes, it would do actually. So I'm just going to spray this just from the top, just to get a little bit of transition. Very, very subtle. So it's darker underneath, lighter gray on the top. And this is a very, very dark gray, in fact. So it's it's really nice with subtle highlights like this. Okay, and that's what we're going to do for now. Just nice and quick, nice and quick highlights. We're going to move on to the brush stuff soon. I'm just going to do one more, probably layer of. Um, of this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lighten this up. If you've seen my Black Templar um, painting guide that I did for the um, Judas here, then you will know that I like to mix in pale yellows. Oh man, this, that volume is really loud. Let me just mute the computer. I thought it was muted already, actually.
Um, let's drop a little bit of pale yellow in there. Just a little bit, just to lighten that up. I like to use yellow instead of white because it kind of adds a little bit of a warmth to the gray. Doesn't make it look as washed out, especially if I'm gonna be painting reds and things like that. It just helps to complement them nicely. Okay, so let's just mix it up. Just create this nice light gray. Uh, the yellow that I'm using there is from AK Interactive. I think Vallejo do a very similar one called Ice Yellow, if I'm not mistaken. And we also have one called um, Dawn Yellow from Games Workshop as well. So yeah. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a lighter gray there. Now this is going to be a lot, I'm going to mix a little bit more thinner in there because adding the extra paint in there is going to be a little bit, it's going to thicken it up a bit. I want to have an even more subtle spray this time around. Okay. Okay, I'm kind of neglecting the chat here, guys. I'm sorry, I'm just focusing so much on getting this. Um, okay, let's just work way back. I watch stuff on double speed, so I'll check out the VOD later. Thank you for the content, you're welcome. Um, I, I maybe we should speak really slowly just so it's the normal speed for you. Um, who else have we got here? Finally been waiting for this conversion ever since it's been announced, so happy to finally see it happen. Yes, I thought I'd get this in before the end of the new year. Um, I wanted to kind of get that nicely wrapped up and done. So I did a Necron conversion Friday, so I've got to do some sort of uh, conversion here as well. So I'm just going to apply a very small amount of it here, just on the top, a very, very small spot. I'm just going to build that up very slowly, in fact. And a little, another little spot on this shoulder here. Hardly any pressure, and I'm going to slowly build that up. I want a very, very kind of tight spots here. I don't want to have like an overarching spray. And the problem with this kind of work is that it's very easy to just go over the top with it and just make the whole model look ridiculous. So, to make the painting easier, choosing a different shade of red would help to make the black snake or dragon be more visible as color bleed is the less problem you want, yeah. So I'm, I really want to make this black look darker, so I'm going to use a really bright red for these. I know the actual, um, the image that we've got in the codex, the Space Marine codex, the, the red's quite dark, but because I'm, I want to bring out the black, I don't want it to, to look too flat, um, I need to go increase the brightness then with the actual, it's even coming out. Okay, there it is. Add the nozzle a little bit too fine. There we go, that's better. So make sure when you spray on these lower pressures, it ends up drying before you even get out the nozzle sometimes. Okay. Like I said, I don't want to go too far with this one. Just very, very subtle. Okay. A little bit on the wrist, a little bit on the shoulder, a little bit more on the head. How are we going here? Okay, let's realize I'm spraying this really off camera. I'm going to move adjust the camera slightly, guys, just so you can see a bit more of what's going on here. Let's go up. Let's go up a bit further. There we go. That's better. Much better. Um, question, will you ever think about converting Maccabian, Maccabian janitors? I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, yes, so there is some components from Liber Demonica bits, the guys' uh, bits that I used in my recent Ultramarines veteran um, video. And that's, those guys have done some kind of really nice helmets, and that's the only thing that I've been really struggling with. Yeah, um, so they've got to do some heads, so I'm going to be using those, because those heads for the, the Genesis are very, very distinct. Um, so converting them, I tried like a few prototypes, but it just didn't look right. It just didn't, the scaling wasn't right, or um, the style wasn't right. I tried 3D printing, but I couldn't find any decent 3D printed heads. Um, there's a few companies that make them, but I've ultimately settled on using some from Liebe de Monica, simply because I really like their models. So yeah, there we go. So that's all I'm going to go for here. Really, really subtle with these. I think in the past I've gone really over the top with these and made the models look extremely bright and far too light. So that's all I'm going to do for now. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to go move on to the highlights now. So I'm going to just drop a little bit cleaner in here just so we can progress. Just put a little bit cleaner through as well. So 
So the only thing as well about the um, that one guy. Thank you very much for putting those on the on the Discord, by the way. Um, I mean, the 3D printed parts are great, but not everyone has access to a 3D printer. Um, so I kind of wanted at least to have maybe an alternative that you could use as a component. Um, what airbrush do I use? Um, the one I'm using at the moment is kind of my workhorse. It's the Iwata HPC Plus. Um, it's got a 0.3 millimeter nozzle, so I find it's good for base coating, uh, priming, things like that. And it's, it's kind of fine enough to do these little detail works. But I do have like a 0.2 millimeter one as well. I don't use very often because it's very hard to use. Um, but yeah, I, do, I will be using that in the future. Um, Sindri, uh, also happy to see you have your hands full ever since the announcement of this conversion. Amazing artist, and there's a lot to look forward to uh, in terms of expected content. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, they were called Black Vipers, yet the icon on the Viper is red. Yeah, I don't get that. That's an interesting one. They are trying to trying to pull a fast one on us. I sure the light. How's the light there? How's the how's the uh, focus? By the way, does it look okay? Because I really can't see it very well from here. Bear with me. Let me just uh, one second. Let me just see if I can sort it myself. Okay, I've made the screen a little bit bigger, so I should be able to see the focus and how that's looking. That's okay about that. As long as I keep it about that, it's okay. Cool, okay. So we can move to the highlights now. So I've got my wet palette here. That's all ready to go, and we're gonna do the same colors as before. We're gonna use a bit of black gray here. Um, I'm gonna start off with some of that on the palette. Just a little bit to start off with. And then we're gonna grab some pastel yellow again. So we want to create roughly the same color that we had in the airbrush. Now because we're doing it through the airbrush, it's gonna be applied in layers, so it's not gonna be quite as, um, it's not gonna be quite as strong through the airbrush as it is on the palette. So we kind of mix the same mixture in quantity, mix the same quantities and we should end up with a much brighter color on the model itself than we did through the airbrush. So I'm just gonna get a dab of water just, just to make this a little bit easy to work with. And I'm just gonna pop that in there. A little bit more yellow. Yeah, that's still on the camera. Just double checking. I wasn't just talking to myself, just mixing paints off camera. Let's go a little bit lighter with that. Okay. I think we have got a good mixture there, perfect. Right, um, brush to use, brush to use. Let's go for go for an army painter brush. Where is my regiment brush now? I thought I got it out. I did. It's underneath some tissue. So what's everyone been working on this weekend? We're getting close to Christmas now, so hopefully a few of you got some time, some extra time off at Christmas. I know I have. So I'm going to be doing some painting myself, getting some backlog done, getting some interesting videos made as well. So I've just got a little bit on the brush there. I'm just gonna use this to just bring out some of these edges. Really, really subtle highlights to start off with at least. So just to double check, um, so this model has red trims on the shoulder pads and it also has red knee pads, so basically everywhere apart from those areas. Good mixture here. The thing is with highlights, you don't want to use too thin of a mixture because you don't want it flowing off the brush too quickly. Um, whilst I would never base coat with this kind of consistency of paint, highlighting with it is much easier because it kind of keeps the bristles nice and kind of firm, gives you a better point, and it gives you more of a solid color. Because with a highlight, you just want to do the one coat. You don't want to go back over like you would do with a base coat. So at the moment, I'm just gonna be focusing the highlight on these upper edges. So if you take, the, for example, this panel here, um, this edge will be highlighted, this edge won't. 
and that just helps to reinforce that um, that style that I'm going for with the light coming from above. Finished my custom squad that I kit bashed last streaming, very nice. Uh, I'm painting my Warhammer uh, Warhammer Day Chaplain and still waiting on my Corn Berserkers to get here. Hopefully they get there very soon. Tiger Sympathizer uh, successfully scaled up a tactical marine to Chaos Space Marine scale using the old True Scale kit. Convinced Primus weren't necessary. Yeah, it was an interesting move, really. I can understand them wanting to reinvent the line, um, but I think part of the reason why that might have been, in my own interpretation of Games Workshop Strange, actions sometimes, is that they didn't want to, I think if they made true primaris is just true scale marines, a lot of people would not want to use their old true scale marines. They wouldn't want to buy them either. Um, so what they would do by making primaris, you suddenly had two lines, you suddenly had a line where people would go and go ahead and still buy the old models, but then they would also buy the new models as well. Um, but if you just updated everything and made it true scale, no one would bother buying the old models. Everyone would just buy the new ones. Um, so that's my reasoning anyway. It also means that they've been able to make different units and they've managed to go back by having eliminators instead of um, scout snipers and things like that. That's my opinion anyway. Um, pimping out. I'm assuming you mean pumping out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could be pimping out. You can maybe put in like some um, diamond crystals on there, some leopard print, things like that. Pretty cool. Some nice plush purple. Uh, building 20 Imperial Fist breaches. Very nice. I do like um, breaches. They're really nice models, especially Imperial Fist colors as well. Just work perfectly. Uh, trying to procure a Judicia and do an Empress Champion. Imitation as eyes form a flattery. Thank you very much, uh, Adeptus Cole. Vulcan lives. Um, I actually do believe he's still he's still out there somewhere. He's just uh, he's not gone. I'm sure Games Workshop will bring him back. We'll see. We'll see what happens in the next uh, supplement. We'll see. Um, I've got a painting competition due for the 27th, and my paint still hasn't arrived. Basic Incessor, but the first one I've painted in 10 years and decided to try non-metallic metal. Wow, that's brave. I mean, I even I struggle with non-metallic metal and I paint all the time. So, I mean, it's a great way of learning. And honestly, I do, I do, uh, I do respect the courage there. I wish you all the best as well. Hopefully the paint's coming too. Uh, I'm currently painting a Chaos Rhino in the Night Lord color scheme. Pretty cool, actually. I don't think I've seen... I haven't seen many rhinos in Night Lord colours. Appreciate your video on Night Lord painting. Has it helped out with the painting my Terminator squad? Glad to hear it. Glad it's been useful. I don't know, they're clearly not putting a lot of effort into the first ball range factor. Yeah, and I... I I'm not saying that they want to keep on selling um, those guys at the same time. I think they just wanted to... I mean, Primus has been out for three years now. It takes a long time to build up the same number of models that the Firstborn range had. So they wanted to give themselves plenty of time to build up the mod, build up the range. I mean, when they f first came out, the Primus weren't that many. There wasn't that many units for them. We had, like, one vehicle, a Dreadnought... Um, two infantry units, or three infantry units if include Reavers, um, and some specialist units. There wasn't that many, so they kind of wanted to keep the Firstborn Space Marines around. Um, I would say that by the time the next Space Marine Codex comes out, or maybe the one after that, we'll see, um, we'll start to see Firstborn Marines getting phased out. I don't know if they'll do like a Primus-only Codex, or if they'll do... I don't know. I think eventually we'll see the old Firstborn stuff being moved to Legends, at least. I would try and get the non-metallic metal on a few simpler bits, shoulder trim, maybe chest evil isn't Vulcan and perpetual who shops on it. Yeah, the Vulcan is a perpetual. Um, 
so yeah, hopefully we'll show up somewhere. Uh, and yeah, I agree, non-metallic metal on those smaller areas is going to be much better. Um, it also means if you do decide that you just want to stop halfway through, which I've done in the past, um, then you, it's easy enough to cover those areas back up again. So spin this guy around, paint the other side of the helmet here. Currently finishing my last three Death Guard heroes, got all six, and then some Possessed for Death Guard, nice. Uh, I've picked up those those six heroes as well. Um, they're still in the boxes, and they'll probably be in the boxes for a while, but once, um, once we get some codex information in terms of like when it's actually going to be released, then I'll probably get those guys out, get them painted. They're quite nice for just for bulking out some of the special weapons, like Plague Spewers and things like that, rather than using those that are in the Death Guard, the Plague Marine set. Fenris in Grey is the best height for black for me. Yes, I've used Fenris in Grey really nicely uh, to good effect on a Death Watch 3. Okay, so I think I've done most of the edges here. Um, like I said, I don't want to go too over the top here because I want to keep the armor nice and black. I don't want it to go in too bright, kind of stra straying into the gray category. Let's do a little bit more around this thigh here, just to pick out these details. And this bit here as well. I'm going to go over this again with a lighter color. I'm going to reduce the area down a little bit more, but I do want to get a slightly lighter gray in here just to really bring out some of those details. Okay. So let's do the rifle. Primus only codex will be disgusting. I mean, it's going to happen. It's inevitable, really. It might be a while. It might be a good few years. But I can guarantee that once we, once they've kind of hit, sat, no, not saturation point, but once they've kind of hit the point that they feel that a every existing firstborn unit has been replaced by a Primus equivalent, then I think that's what will happen. Might be a while yet. I mean, it's taken them three years so far, so we can see. The only thing, I mean, I don't mind personally, um, from like a game point of view. I'm, if I was going to collect Space Marines, I'd probably just go with Primus anyway. Um, but what I do mind is from a conversion point of view, because the thing is, one of the things that Games Workshop haven't done with this new Primus range is they haven't really gone anywhere with. Um, chapter specific kits or models beyond upgrade sprues and the odd character. We don't have any Primus Sanguinary Guard. We don't have any Primus Death Company kits. We don't have um, Wolf Guard um, Aggressors or Blade Guard or anything like that. We don't have anything specific units, which we did do with the Firstborn Marines. And the thing is that it's going to make every army just so, so bland and so much the same like your death your deathwing terminator is just going to be aggressors now or blade guard and they're not aggressors sorry just going to be blade guard and they're just going to be bone colored and a bone colored version of the guy's space walls which are baby blue colored so there's not really going to be much of a variation other than color schemes i mean it's, it's kind of good for me because people are going to start watching my videos for conversions then but we're losing a lot of the wealth of conversion components out there then which is which is what I'm sad about, to be honest. And I really hope that they do start to, once they feel like they've got a good amount of range, they start making some specific um, chapter models and kits. Uh, question, will you ever do more homebrew competitions? Yes, I probably will do in the future. Um, nothing just yet, because they take quite a long time to do them. Um, but... Yeah, I probably will do in the future. I've just realized I've actually scrolled this up and I haven't uh, it's been scrolling down. Oh my God. So many chat messages that I've missed. I do collect. Uh, I do collect. Um, there's no need to cap, caps lock everything, Alexander. I can I can see this. Don't worry. Um, I, I have got some Star Wars Legions. I've painted some Star Wars Legions. I haven't got much painted Star Wars Legions though. Um, but yeah, I have, I have painted some in the past. I've done some tutorials for them in the past as well, actually. Um... We do have Death Company Incessors, but they're just weird. Yeah, I mean, they're just basically... They're just painted differently. They're just... Assault Incessors just painted differently. There's not 
anything specifically Death Watch about them. Uh, Death Company, not Death Watch. Um, if so, what are the best non primers kits to pick up for kit bashing before they get phased out? Um, so, I mean, it really depends on which which kind of um, arm you're going for, like anything. If you're doing Space Wars, the, um, basically the, you want the kits that give you as many options as possible. So one of the things that I quite like is the um, Deathwing Knights because it gives you loads of different options because you get enough to do, um, you get the robed heads, you get the shields, you get the different maces of absolution, you get the flails, you get lots of different really cool intricate little components in there. Um, same with the Ravenwing upgrade sprue. I mean, they might keep that going around actually, but that's a very good kit. Um, I'm trying to think what else is pretty good actually. The Space Wolf ones are pretty good actually. Part of me will actually see a conversion for the Primaris for the Chaos Space Marine, as in war it is a matter of time for the fall to Chaos like the regular Marine. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with them. Um, to see whether Games Workshop decide, oh, we can we can make a lot of money here by releasing a whole Primaris range of Chaos. Are we back? I think we're back. I'm not sure. Um, hopefully that's worked. I'm just going to check now. Um, I don't know. Honestly, you can't make it up. You just know the stream. The power dips out for a second, and then all of a sudden, your stream's gone. It could have literally have happened at any other time, and the uh, <laughs> in the whole day, in the whole week, and it just conks out on this one. So hopefully, uh, are we back? Brilliant. Okay. Hopefully, this is yes. We're back. Perfect. Thank you for everyone for sticking around. I do really apologize for that. Honestly, my computer just died completely. I had to wait for it to boot back up again, which took ages. And then when it finally did, the actual software couldn't get working. I was like, oh man. It's just nightmare. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for everyone for sticking around. Um, and we're going to resume. We're going to resume painting. So thank you very much. Um, so I should also mention as well, I forgot, I forgot to mention it early on, uh, I am streaming on Twitch as well, so go down to the description, click on that, watch me on Twitch please, so I can get affiliates. Thank you. <laughs> okay, right, let's, let's carry on. Where was I? We learned a lot about the Chaos Primers. Okay, I wasn't really paying attention to the chat, so I do apologise. Um, I was trying to get the computer back on. Anyway. Anyway. Let's get back. Where were we? We were painting the the, the rifle. Now, so I remember someone just before I went said, oh, what rifle is that one? I said, it's a mystery, guys. This is a super secret. You're going to have to watch the uh, watch the old conversion video on Friday to find out exactly what this guy is. So, Based on a last talent. I, I don't know what it's called. I haven't named it yet, but uh, it's got some interesting background. We'll see. Okay. I'm kind of glad that the whole um, stream just didn't end and I had to start the whole thing again. That would have been just ridiculous. I did like someone's comment there, the, uh, the Gala fields have failed. Yeah, it felt like that. I thought I was going to attack my some sort of zinch pink horror through my window okay so that's the first highlight second highlight we're going to mix in a little bit more yellow which is so counterintuitive when you're painting black um, a little bit yellow there we go perfect okay might have put too much on the palette there yeah way too much this will do. Uh, I'm kind of going to go up a step, so quite a bit brighter than what we had before. Um, just so it contrasts nicely against the previous highlight. And we can really use it to accentuate. 
<laughs> Swaggy five viewers Twitch stream. Yeah. Five people on Twitch. <laughs> I'm going to blame the power cut. Oh, we're at 10 now. We're at 10. And that's not like the most I've had on uh, Twitch at one point, any one point. Seven, eight, nine. Look at this, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate your love tonight. I really needed it, to be honest, because I've just had a... the whole, This whole stream's just gone terribly. <laughs> the actual stream's okay, but... I just couldn't get anything to work, getting it set up. I was a little bit flustered coming into it. I hadn't got everything set up that I wanted to. Um, and then the stream goes down. So I should just stick to normal videos, really. If something goes wrong, you just edit it out. It's perfect. Anyway, I should probably explain what I'm doing. So last highlight was pretty much all the top edges. Um, anything that you kind of had coming in... Um, coming over the top there. So these these kind of areas at the top are going to be lightened because the sun's coming down on it. Um, so we're kind of going to be carrying on with that. I actually missed the gorgeous. Let's quickly grab that with the old paint first. Um, so these areas I'm actually going to be just highlighting again with the brightest grey that we've got here. And it's just going to really help those areas to pop. I'm going to help them pop, guys. Okay. Got to highlight this arm as well, so it's a good job I came back. So let's grab a little bit more of this lighter grey now we've done those areas. Again, just focusing on these areas more towards the top. Probably going to even avoid... Mm, I could do this a little bit here. A little bit of a, like a corner eye highlight, a little extreme highlight there. Maybe just a little bit on the toe. Nothing too extreme. I might come back to this once I've got the red because I'm worried that this will look a little bit too bland if I don't. Actually, I'm not going to worry too much about that because it's going to be hidden by the rifle. Um, this is another good thing about doing part assemblies um, just because it's so much easier to do these kind of intricate highlights because you're not kind of fighting around yourself. I'm going to keep this black, this cape, because realistically, if that was at the back, you wouldn't really see much of it unless I decide to go for like a bright color for the cape. I'm going to keep that bit black because the shading, you've got to create depth with it. Is my net slow as the stream not really working? Um, seems to be working okay from my side. I don't know what everyone else is, is experiencing. Let's have a look. Yeah, it seems to be working okay. We'll see. Maybe it's Twitch. So I think that's probably enough. I might just catch this here. That. Okay, it did just drop. I think it just, yeah, it just kind of lagged a bit there, which is strange. Very odd. I don't know what's going on tonight. Who knows? So, again, just the lighter grey highlight just along these areas here, just at the top. And just over here as well. Okay. Let's go for this edge too. A little bit there. And a little bit that side. There we go. As a Twitch stream, it's not going work, not working. Um, hmm. Odd. Might be because I'm kind of streaming to the two at the same time. Okay. 
that'll do for the black highlights now, I think. I don't want to go too far with those. I might come back to them later on. But now we're going to start working on red. Now, I'm going to paint the backpack um, the same colors, but I'm going to use airbrush for that one. But rather than just kind of going for the airbrush first, I'm going to use um, brush techniques. And the paints that I'm going to be using are from AK Interactive. Now, this, these do some like really nice, um, really vibrant paints. Very rich paints indeed. So we're going to start off with this here. This is dirty red. It's a really nice kind of deep red color. I'd say it's closer to something like corn red, but it's got a, it's really kind of rich pigment in it. So yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Hold fast your loyalty to the uh, our loyalty to the war game is being tested. Yeah. So this is actually, you can see how bright this is I'm just going on my palette. Um, I'm really going to kind of push the reds on here. I'm going to try something a little bit different. Might work, it might not, we'll see. I'm going to make the black look blacker by making the colors look brighter. Fairly simple. See how it plays out. So this guy, he's going to have red trim. Um, so it's going to be the trim on this shoulder pad and we're going to paint the knees as well. I think the only other thing would be the crest, but. Um, I might paint that red just to give a little bit of red detail to the chest area as well. Um, that's probably more like silver, I suppose, on other models, but we'll go for it. Yeah, let's go for it. So this is obviously quite a thick paint, so we're doing a base coat, so we want to just thin that down a little bit. Just a little bit of water just to make that easy to work with. This paint's very, very kind of rich in pigment, so it should cover nicely. Using the same brush as before, no need to switch out here. Get a nice red base color on those. Yeah, the AK paints are really nice. The uh, the new third generations um, are really nice as well. Um, when I first heard that they'd done this third generation thing, I was a little bit like, I don't know, that's the wrong brush. I was like, third generation? I didn't realize we were in the second one. Um, so I was like, okay, that's interesting. But they actually work really nicely. They're, they're kind of, they're very highly pigmented, so you can base coat with them really easily. You don't really need to keep applying several thin layers. Um, they mix really nicely, and they you can put them through an airbrush. So I thought, well, this is actually really good. The, the pot's quite nice as well. Um, but I generally prefer these kind of highly pigmented paints, personally. I don't know why. Highly pigmented paints, personally. Pete's highly pigmented paints. Okay, so the red is quite bright, but as that dries, it'll fade a little bit. Question, how do you come up with lore? Does it come before the model, with the model, or do you just make it up? So if I'm making like a homebrew chapter myself, um, so let, I mean, let's use this guy for example, because this is kind of like a, in the middle. Um, he already has an established scheme, he already has a name, he already has a background, um, but he doesn't have much. He doesn't have much in the way of information. Everything's very, very limited on how much info we've got for these guys. So when I'm doing a conversion for these, I'm kind of reading in between the lines as much as I can. I'm kind of trying to see where there are gaps in the law and where I can fill them in. So for this guy, um, the little bit of paragraph that we get for him, I'm gonna kind of elaborate more of it on the actual conversion guide. Um, but these guys are followed by, they're very mysterious and they seem to be followed by the agents of core. And they potentially assassinated a salamander's chaplain that kind of came to meet them. So my opinion of these guys is, my kind of headcanon, is that these guys are basically the personal primaries of Core, And these are his personal army. And with this army, what he does is he kind of tests out new equipment, new weapons. And that makes perfect sense because these guys come from the Salamanders. And obviously the Salamanders are already kind of weaponsmiths in their own right. So the fact that they would be employed to test weapons seems to make sense. Um, their armor color is black and red, which is like a stealthy versions of Adeptus Mechanicus colors of Balasaurus. 
Bel is it Belisarius or Belisarius? Of, well, of course. Of, uh, of course colors. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I imagine. I also imagine being essentially assassins as well. I think they're trained to take out other space marines. Now, be that primaris if something goes wrong or be them firstborn marines. Um, I don't know. I've kind of alluded to that with a little kind of firstborn marine helmet that I've put on the base there. But yeah, I imagine these guys to be uh, kind of assassins and also testing out experimental technology that that Cause invented, even though it shouldn't do. So I kind of think they're very secret. Um, so with that kind of thing, I got a little bit of paragraph and I just built upon it. And with my own homebrew stuff, I often have an idea for a theme or a particular model style and I work backwards from there. I don't often work with a, with a, with a law um, I go for the the finish style, the conversion components, the themes I want to convey on the model, and then work backwards. Okay. Happy. Uh, when would you say it's a good time to buy an airbrush? I wanted to buy one for a while, though I'm new to the hobby, but scared to bite the bullet. It's it really depends because some people can get away with never using an airbrush, and some people don't like to use airbrushes. I don't use airbrushes in the same ways that, that other people use them. Some people use them for everything and their whole armies are completely airbrushed. They very rarely use brush techniques. I like to use them for base colors. I like to use them for priming and sometimes I like to use them for getting some interesting effects. So if you're just using them, if you want to use it to replace your painting, then I would probably get one sooner rather than later just so you can kind of improve on your painting ability first well you don't need to worry about improving on your painting ability sorry uh, and you can improve on your airbrushing ability instead if you want to do it more for me like how I just use them for base coats and doing a little bit of shading then probably stick with your painting first really build upon that technique and then switch over to the airbrush because it can be a little bit of, of kind of like a crutch so yeah that's my personal opinion anyway Call up to his shenanigans again, yeah, definitely. He's always up to something, that guy. I'm just concentrating here whilst I get this, uh, this little symbol. Silence is deafening. I had some background music that said I helped to fill out this app, but no, you've got silence, guys. That's all you're allowed. Okay. I'm going to apply just a very thin layer just to kind of help smooth this out a little bit more. But I think that's worked quite nicely for the base color. Um, I'll be doing the same colors on the backpack. Well, I'm just going to airbrush those just because it's quicker. And I can get some shading in there as well. Um, Pete, great work again. Any Conflict 47 in the works at all? Um, there is some war game stuff coming, but not any Conflict 47 just yet. Um, maybe in the future, though. Never say never. I'm sure I'll be coming back to do some of their vehicles and in units and things like that. Very nice models in that range. How many of colour are you going to add for the red? So, uh, I'm not sure really. I'm going to start off with, with this. Um, I've applied one and then like a thin layer just to help block it out a little bit. So, two layers of base coat. But in terms of actual how many layers, layers, I'm probably going to do a red layer, um, like a brighter red layer, sorry and then move on to highlighting after that because I want to get a really nice bright red here. Okay, so I think that's okay for the time being. I'm going to move on to just adding a little more base color there. So that says relaxing. Don't always need to speak, I suppose.
which don't speak for the rest of the uh, the stream now. <laughs> It seems that after drying, my paint looks matte. Is it the question of the right mix? No, I mean, that's fine. Um, I find that the, if you apply a kind of a thicker layer, it also depends on the paint you're using, but I find if you apply a thicker layer of paint, then you tend to get um, more of a glossy kind of consistency. I think it's just because of how the paint dries. Um, if you apply several layers of um, thinned paint, then it dries with a much more kind of uneven surface. So yeah. Uh, Benjamin Del Rio, welcome back to the chat. Um, hi, so what is this chapter? How are they unique? So these guys are one of the fourth of the new Salamander successors, and they are basically, um, I kind of mentioned it already very briefly, but I'm, I'm kind of imagining them as being Cole's personal um, kind of personal primaris marines. They, they, they're there to do his bidding. Um, but they're also as a test bed for his like new weaponry and new equipment that he's trying to get out before he kind of rolls it out to the rest of the space marines. Which makes sense because of salamanders. And I would imagine that salamanders are pretty effective at maintaining and helping to develop new weaponry. But because yeah, Call shouldn't really be doing that kind of thing, it's not really going to go against everything that the... Adeptus Mechanicus believe in that no new stuff should be invented, it should just be rediscovered. Um, testing new stuff just doesn't work for them. So I imagine that the chapter would be very secretive, which explains why they had a chapel, a Salamander's chaplain suddenly disappear when uh, he went to investigate them. Okay, so we've got a really nice bright red there to begin with. I don't think there's any red on the arms, so don't need to worry about the gun. We don't need to worry about the power pack. I'm going to paint that all separately, which means we can move on to the next layer, AK Interactive Paint. And they're probably Heretic Gene Seed. Yeah, totally. I mean, there's so, so many little hints of different um, heretical Gene Seed in the new Primaris. It's just ridiculous. Okay, so the next paint we're going to use is some of AK Interactive's Intent Range which basically just means that it's just a little bit of a stronger pigment. Um, and I'm going to use deep red here. Okay, let's drop a little bit of that on the palette. And this is, if you can see there, just kind of shade it a little bit. So you can see it's quite a, quite a bit brighter than the actual uh, deep red. And it kind of helps me to really emphasize the brightness of this red, make it really stand out against the black. So I'm going to thin this out a little bit more than I did before because the intense colors have even more pigment than the other colors that we've used. So these need to be thinned out a little bit more, maybe like a three to one mixture. Okay, so this time I'm going to be applying a layer. Um, but rather than painting the whole area, I'm using quite a thin mixture here. So I'm just going to be applying um, much in the same way as I did with the highlights. I'm just going to be focusing on areas that are more towards the top here. So for example, this shoulder pad here, I'm going to paint this part of the trim. And I'm going to paint it around about halfway down. So you can see how it kind of starts to move from the brighter red. And then it kind of goes down to the, the darker red here because this red would be a bit brighter because of light falling from above. Same kind of principle with these knee pads. This top half here is gonna be this brighter red and then we're gonna slowly feather that out as we get down to the bottom. And what we're left with is this kind of transition between the two colors. And by using a thinner paint for this as well, it helps to make that transition much more, much smoother, much more subtle. So I'm just going to leave that to dry, and then come back and apply a second layer. Have you had a go with army potato paint? Uh, army potatoes, army painters metallic colours. Um, not yet. No, I have got them. I haven't had a chance to use them though. Um, I haven't really had anything to use them on actually. I haven't really painted anything that I felt like I've had to use them. Um, I might try. I think they've got a bluish one in there, which might be good for doing um, something. 
Alpha Legion -y, maybe. That one might be quite good. Their regular metallics are really good though, so I'm sure they'll be really nice. So you can see like how this how having such a bright red like this has made um has made the black look even darker. And obviously if I go more so with that with other areas, so I'm hoping to add some greens, which should contrast really nicely. Um, then that black will just look darker and darker and darker, even though I've, it's more of a gray than a black. Okay, let's do that little symbol on the chest there. Try a little bit more on the knee pad before I go over again, but I can go over this section here. Let's just. There we go. Just leave that to dry, dry for the time being. Um, question What black undercoat did you use, Pete? Chaos Black. No, I used um, some of Vallejo's Black Surface Primer. I started off with that, and then over the top of that, I airbrushed some of Vallejo's black. They're just like regular black paint. Do I have it here? Um, some of their regular black paint. And the reason for this is because this has a slightly kind of glossy appearance to it, and it makes it look a bit grayer. So I sprayed this first, let it dry, and then went over with just some black, just to give me like a solid black color then. I have an idea for conversion, a wolf guard from Legion of the Damned. Instead of the fire theme, a frost blue ghost theme. All armor blue black and head a light blue, mouth and eyes with. That'd be really nice actually, it's quite a nice kind of um, contrast. It, it follows the same idea, but you have this kind of like icy hot fire. Should be pretty cool. Nice idea. I'm just gonna grab my drink, I've left it over on the other side of my desk. Bear with me. If they're slightly different blacks also helps on touching up such. Yes, totally. Um, using a primer to base coat coat just wouldn't work as well. So I started off with just the, the plain black there, um, just to give me much easier color to start off with. Uh, if you're starting off with things, if you're using it and you're gonna be applying a base coat over the top, you don't need to spray it black, but because the armor is black here, I decided to, to use that black there. So I think that has dried. So I'm gonna apply a little bit more red. I want a really solid red at the top here. here as well. So you can possibly see one of the things that I'm trying to do is slowly, kind of every time I do it, I'm reducing the area that I'm covering and it helps to make that transition a little bit smoother. You can see how nice and bright these paints are. Okay, so I think that's gonna be it for that, actually. I don't think I'm gonna worry about applying another layer. I can go straight to the highlights. Um, okay, so I've got a choice now. I can add a little bit of pale yellow to the red, or I can go for an orange for a highlight. Now, the problem with using orange is that I don't want it to be overpowering and just make it look like, make it look too um, too orangey basically uh, but if I start adding pale yellow then I can kind of end up making it a little bit too pink and I lose some of the intensity and colour there so we'll have to see um, I'm going to mix a little bit of pale yellow into this 
red here. I'm just going to see what kind of that, what mixture that makes first, and I can always progress from there. Um, Eli P. Hey Pete, any tips for brush maintenance? Your regiment brush seems to have a much finer tip than mine. Even my brand new one, anything special to do to keep them so nice? Yes, so always keep the little um, cover on them. Always, always, always. You can see mine here. Never use it for metallics. Um, I have a specific metallic brush for that. I have this old um, Artist Opus brush, which I use. And then the biggest thing that I recommend is this here. This is um, a brush cleaner. So if you're using things like natural fibers, then what you'll use, what you'll do is, um, if I've got a brush handy that I can demonstrate with. So I'll clean out my brush um, in my paint water, and then I'll basically run that through the fibers and work it through. And then I'll go and rinse this out, and that gets the paint out. And I feel like there's even more paint in there. I'll do it again. And then finally, what I do is I get the brush coated in it and then I kind of put it into the into one like the crease in my hand and just get that point back and what I'll do then is I'll leave that put the cap back on and that'll dry and that'll kind of harden then and that'll help to um, not only protect the bristles but it help to kind of condition them and keep them softer for longer and you also avoid any paint getting stuck in there so yeah it's basically just really simple straightforward um, brush care. It's, I think that the, the actual stuff is very easy to use. Let me just get rid of this spam person. You are blocked. Thank you. Bye. Okay, yeah. So, uh, Master's Brush Cleaner, it's great stuff and yeah, it works really nicely. Hey, Pete, I have a somewhat large Sons of the Phoenix Army, all Primus, and I want to convert up some character sergeants. I was wondering where you would start when coming up with ideas or bits. So you're going to want candles. Seems to be the um, main theme for those guys. If you want candles, then I would recommend going to like a third party. Um, Green Stuff World do them. Anvil Industry do them. I think Cromlech do them little resin candles. They're really nice and... Uh, uh, they kind of just It just makes it easier than trying to cut up components from Games Workshop kits, so you can just basically pop them around the top, um, put them on the backpack, um, just kind of go go crazy with that kind of theme. I think it works quite nicely. A lot of scroll work as well, actually. So if you've seen my Covenant of Fire conversion guide, I use some pennants from... So I think this orange is going to be much too bright, you know, personally. Um, I use the pennants from... Skaven Plague Monks, they have these nice little pictures. So what do you think of the new Orc piece? It's actually really nice. Um, I'll probably pick up one, at least one, um, just to convert. I actually think you'd make like a really nice Orc boss, because we don't actually have many um, plastic Orc war bosses, just like generic, so yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Let's add a little bit of yellow in there, so put a bit on palette. Get a brush that I can use for mixing. This is okay. Make sure it's clean. Okay. Just a little bit in here. I don't want to go over the top with this. See how it kind of goes to this kind of pinky color? I'm not sure if I like that. I think we're getting a lighter color, but we're losing some of the intensity. If I showed that, you can see. I think I'm going to go for orange here. Let's go for orange. thing is I didn't mix that up enough uh, Yolanda did you check my work in progress obliterated it yes I did I forgot to message um, message you it was really nice work on that one actually I'm surprised I was kind of wasn't sure how they would stack up against each other in terms of scale but I think you did a really good job at that one um, if you if you get it painted then drop a picture of that in the server as well because I'd really like to see it painted the red looks a little pink already. Um, it doesn't look too bad in person, but it's possibly the stream. I think the exposure on the camera makes it look a bit pinkier than it actually is. Um, but yeah, I think I might just mix a little bit of this orange into the red to begin with, just to make a bit more of a, a smoother transition. I'm going to use a little bit of red here because the red is quite strong.
Okay, that's that's working. That's like a really nice, a bit like a Wild Rider red, I would say. Maybe a little bit oranger than a Wild Rider. Okay, let's go for that. I'm just going to use this as a highlight. Again, we're going to use the good old trusty uh, regiment brush here. <laughs> shaking a part of camera, shaking a part of paint off camera. So just do it. I know. Honestly, I was doing it as far away from the microphone as possible, um, just because I wasn't sure if you could hear it. But I mean, yeah, I apologize for anyone who's, who's uh, watching this with speakers on at the moment. Your house, your house, for, <laughs> your housemates might be worried about what you're watching. Um, this goes perfect, in my opinion. I'm waiting on kits to finish the left arm so I can add to that and then build the organic parts of the green stuff. Yeah, I think that's going to be the biggest challenge, doing the, getting those organic parts looking right. Um, I think it's going to be the hardest thing to get. I mean, um, personally, I'd find it hard. I don't know how hard it's going to be for you. You could be an absolute whiz at uh, green stuffing for all I know. Yeah, I think it works nice. It's nice and subtle. I might go a little bit. I might use a bit more of the intense orange in a bit. <laughs> ben Ives, right, I'm at the bath now. What have I missed? Can I start? Yeah, I'll just. Um, I've got some paint blitzer somewhere. Let's just blitz this guy and start again just for Ben. <laughs> How long have you been in the bath for as well, Ben? I think you joined the stream at like 7 o'clock and we're like, I'm getting in the bath. There we go, it's working nicely. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> My wife asked what I was watching. Xeno or Abhuman Space Marines? I don't think I don't know how that would work, actually. I think the Xeno one would work, in a way, because you could kind of say that they were more like... One thing I wanted to do, actually, was make a Gene Stealer Cult one. Like they've managed to infect a Gene Seed, and it somehow accidentally got past... Um, the apothecaries, and then they end up making a space marine who's got gene seed, gene stealer aspects. That'd be pretty interesting. Okay. Would you ever make a video on any particular homebrew chapter if it wasn't a commission? Um, so I think the only time I ever tend to do those really is part of the homebrew, um, the homebrew competitions, which I will be doing another one in the future. Uh, they just require a lot of work to do, so um, I haven't really had the time, unfortunately. But maybe, maybe if I get 100,000 subscribers, I'll do another one. I think about 10,000 off, so recommend me to all your friends and I will uh, I will uh, I will do a homebrew there we go bribery guys I'm gonna misuse my uh, <laughs> here. Uh, okay let's, let's check out Discord if you're not on Discord guys um, jump on there if you're on YouTube there should be a link I need to put it in the the Twitch link as well, so let's have a look. Uh, tr -tr 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 conversions, 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 conversions. Are they in conversions or are they in pictures? Some really nice pictures and conversions, actually. I need to go on here more often. Sorry, guys, if you're already on Discord and I don't on, I'm not on here, then apologies. Okay, yeah, I can see the spine. Nice work so far. Yeah, I can tell that's a, definitely a spine. I quite like the uh, the skin that you've put around there as well. Uh, if you're on Discord, check out the photos group and you can see um, just what Yolanda's talking about. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> Sashin, no, no, guys, you don't hit the like button, you smash the like button. Everyone knows. You hit the subscribe button, you smash the like button. That's how YouTube knows to show you videos. <laughs> okay, uh, I think I'm going to go for let's go for a pure orange highlight now just to kind of really actually, you know what, let's let's go for yellow let's really push it out there
There was a gene sealer avatar I remember reading about infected a craft world, and when they held the court of the young king, it altered the avatar itself. That's quite nice, actually. Annihilate the like button. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just just shaking more paint pots off camera, guys. Just uh, just really getting that ASMR kind of. There we go. <laughs> I really hope I don't get demonetized for that now. So I've just popped a little bit of yellow on there. You can see there, a little bit of yellow at the bottom there. This is also AK Intense Yellow. And we're gonna just pop a little bit of that on these very, very kind of, I really wanted to kind of push the sharpness of these. So going for a really bright color should help to really help bring these out. So a little dot just on these corners. A little bit too much. There we go. Perfect. Can't forget to ring that little bell icon to never miss an upload. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, and you've got to ring that bell. <laughs> it's a secret to a secret to YouTube, guys. Ask your viewers to do that every single video, and you should be good. I think the yellow is working nice as an extreme highlight here as well. So I should pop a little bit just at the top as well. And we can put some on this little bit here as well. Okay. I think that's the red done there. <laughs> Ivan, Pete, love your work. I uh, love your accent. Can't tell you how many times I've fallen asleep to you painting. I mean, I really hope it's just because my uh, my painting is just not incredibly boring and just I have just an incredibly monotone voice that makes everyone fall asleep as soon as they watch me. And I've got no no adjustment in tone whatsoever, which makes everyone just to fall asleep. A perfect cure to insomnia. Um, I hope it's because my voice is soothing rather than my content is boring. Also, in an audio drama, a Grey Knight was infected by gene sealers while a ship was boarded by heretics. That's a nice idea. I'm actually going to look into this a little bit more. I actually thought it was a bit more of like just an out there kind of idea. But you know what? It actually sounds like gene sealer space marines is a good way to go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to investigate it now. Okay. So we have the red. We have the black. And let's do, what can we do next? Let's go for these straps here. Let's go for a, like a nice bright color to help bring them out. I'm literally waiting on either Chaos Squad or Raptor Squad to arrive so I can fit dual plasma pistols on the left hand to act as plasma guns. That's actually, I did something similar to that in a Ah, oh, what was it now? It was the Adversary Assassin tutorial, the kill team that I did. Um, as a count as plasma gun, I just basically did two plasma pistols because that Van Sarkit only came with that, so it's really nice. Uh, uh, where is that cape torso from? It is from the Eliminators, as is the weapon of choice here. So yeah, it's from the Eliminators uh, kit, that particular one is. Okay, brown. What we're going to be using for the brown here. Let's go for a dark leather. We're going to start off with, let's start off with flat brown. I'm going to use some of Vallejo's flat brown flat. It's got a nice reddish color to it as well, which kind of ties nicely into the rest of it. Okay, just a little bit on the palette there. I'm going to use this for a couple of different areas. So I'm going to use this for the, the straps around the knee, uh, the strap across the chest, and then also this pouch here as well, which is the little power pack for the weapon. So I'm going to paint all those areas with this color, and again, we're just going to water this down a little bit. Okay. 
looking for probably a two to one ratio here. Two to one being two parts paint to one part water for the time being. How did you make the base or does it come like that? Um, so the base is, the texture on the base is cork floor tile and then textured paint over the top of it. Um, originally this guy stood on like a little bit of, of a kind of rocky outcrop and I swapped it out for a space marine head which I'll be explaining how I did that in the tutorial which will be coming on Friday. So I'm just going to apply this over these areas just as a base coat. Again, I want to go quite bright with this, I think, just to make the darkness of the armor look a little bit more, a bit of a stronger contrast between those two areas. Incredibly quiet here whilst I uh, paint those intricate areas. Hi, this guy looks super cool. Is it a custom chapter? And if so, can you tell me a bit about their lore? Now, this guy isn't actually a custom one. He is an official Games Workshop sanctioned Salamander successor. If you have access to the latest Codex Space Marines, they are in there. And they are the first, part of the four official Salamander successors that we've kind of had. We've had like inklings as to what could be Salamander successors in the past, but nothing official. It's the first one. These are the Black Vipers. Um, we have a little bit of information in there. I've embellished it a little bit. But yeah, as uh, Sashin said, am I saying that right? It's a Sashin. Sashin. Um, they are calls Marine Slayer Assassins. That's kind of the, the idea that I've taken from them. We have a tiny little bit of lore and I've just embellished that and taken a little bit of a, my own spin on it. Very careful with these uh, steps here. Don't want to overspill onto the armor. You can see, even though the the armor looked a little bit more grey at first when we first started painting it, the fact that we've put this um, these brighter colors over the top of it, it helps to build contrast and the black will look much darker as a result of it and you can kind of employ this with a lot of models if you feel like you've got an area which is looking too bright then you can turn it down by putting some um, other bright colors next to it and if you wanted an area to look darker you put bright colors next to it and it helps to balance everything out then Oh man, he almost has the exact same color scheme as my custom Blood Angel successor chapter. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. There's only so many um, color schemes going around. And I think unless you get pretty intricate and pretty crazy, there's only so many combinations of colors that you can go for. I just kind of realized this paint scheme could be perfect if you're painting Death Company. Basically just red and black. Perfect. Question, are you going to add color to the helmet? So the armor's gonna be black. Now I'm really actually not sure how to go about this one. And I was kind of waiting to see how the model kind of came together first. I was hoping that I could use paint the mask in red. I think that would look quite nice. I'm not sure yet though. I might do it bone colored, I might do it red. I haven't 100% decided on that. OK. 
Okay, I think that's all. I've got a little bit around the waist there. Let's. Uh, I think that's done now. Don't go too far into these recesses because they just look dark anyway. Yeah, perfect. So let's go on to painting this here. Looks very difficult. Please say a shabti bone. There we go. A shabti bone. Uh, I have started to make my Space Marine Army Black Vipers. I have basically made them cause plasma loving guinea pigs that test theoretical and xenos technology. That's pretty much why I've gone with mine, Ruben. Um, if I bring in this weapon here, you can see it's basically a prototype weapon. So I've got lots of pipes and bits sticking in there and everything's a bit more haphazard. Uh, and on the back, I've got some uh, Mechanicus equipment and some like a little kind of extra sensor away there. So yeah, I think that's, that's kind of the idea that I've gone for there. You might want to add a tad uh, of Admex steel somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Um, I always tend to do my metallics last, just because that's just the way I like to do them. <laughs> ben Hives, please say neurophysiologist. There we go, neurophysiologist. I tell you what, if anyone, I mean, I could start like pimping myself out for. If I can just say words if you just start. Uh, leave me a super chat, guys, and I'll say the word. So, we need to go for a lighter colour here. Now, I'm a little bit unsure of how this will work. I'm going to actually <laughs> gonna try and mix a yellow into here. I want to see what happens. Does it go... Does it go the colour I want? Yeah, it does actually. Can you see that on camera? Yeah, you can see it. A little bit yellow into that flat brown. And it kind of makes a slightly lighter version of it. Wonderful, there we go. Ben Ives, I tell you what, if you, if you super chat me that, I will say that, I will not say it otherwise. Call me a seller if you want, Ben, but my stream, I'm making the rules. You've had, you've had a taste. First taste is free, guys. Everything else after that. Going with any greys, mechanical centre grey would fit the colour theme. So yeah, I don't know if I'll be adding any greys just yet, to be honest. I might, I'm tempted to go for grey on the cloak, maybe. Go for like a camo, like an urban camo. Not 100% sure yet. So I'm going to base coat this with the original colour of flat brown. I'm going to go for a leather pouch here. I'm just going to cover the whole thing. Oops, nearly went for the lighter one then. Have you used any of the color shift paints before? And if not, what would you use them on? Uh, I have used color shift paints before. And for the kind of paints that painting that I use them, they're nice ideas and they do work actually really well. But for my kind of paint schemes, I don't really have any use for them. Um, I try to keep my paint schemes a little bit more realistic, a bit more... Um, I suppose grounded in reality, whereas other people tend to go a little bit more outlandish. And I mean, that's fine. I'm not saying that my way is better than theirs. It's just personal preference. But the only way I could see myself using them and kind of sticking in the realms of realism, as far as you can get with 40k anyway, or fancy, probably maybe some Zinch stuff. I think it would work, work quite nicely. Um, I think that's probably the best use of it. Anything kind of magical, it works quite nicely. I have a work in, project, work in progress project, a Salamander successor chapter called The Fire Ants on a tropical planet. I just copy real fire ants color, that brown reddish fly fail so far. So let's have a look at fire ants. Let's have a Google at fire ants. Let's see if we can come up with a quick rep recipe for you just to see if we can get 
Let's see if we can sort you out. Let's have a look. I uh, use some color shift on a few Necrons. I must attempt to use them on my Thousand Suns. Yeah, I think Thousand Suns, perfect. I think even Necrons would work nicely as well. Um, I definitely think that those would work pretty well. So let's have a look at Fire Ants. Let's just have a quick Google and let's just see if we can come with a very, very quick. Okay, so we've got a very, very kind of dark brownish red there. Um, personally, for that one, I would start off with Games Workshop Paints. Um, go for something like Rhinox Hide and probably Rhinox Hide as a base coat, Doom Ball Brown as a layer or a highlight, and then probably from there you would want to use something like maybe a Mournfang Brown um, or Tuscor for it, for actually that would work nicely. You could do some very fine edge highlights. That's probably where I'd go for that one. And then if you wanted to bring out some of the reds in that, then I would go over everything with a very thin, a very thin glaze of something like Contrast Paint, Flesh Terrors Red, or Blood Angels Red. It's probably where I would go with those if you wanted to do something like that. Ben Ives, thank you. <laughs> as I just wanted to say it once, she sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. Seashells, sea, no, oh, Jesus Christ. She sells seashells by the seashore. So this is the kind of level that we've degraded to now, guys. It's just me just saying tongue twisters on a live stream. Started out as a painting stream. We had a power cut. We lost, we lost connection. What is happening today? What is happening? <laughs> Thank you very much, Ben. I appreciate the support. It'll help pay the uh, the power bills and prevent any, uh, hopefully, prevent any power cuts again. The weird thing is, well, nothing else really went off. Like it was, it was like a, it seemed to be like a little bit of a dip in the power. And my computer's like, nah, I'm just dropping out here. Everything else stayed on, and just, the computer's just like, no, nah, I'm going. I do. She she sells seashells on the sea shite. That's my show. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's getting even worse. Um, I'm not sure about the yellow now. I've changed my mind. This is the thing. I've kind of having uh, doing the tongue twisters has made my change my mind. Oh my god. Um Morel Sabathiel. Morel Sabathiel, Morel Sabathiel, Morel Sabathiel, Morel Sabathiel, Morel Sabathiel. I don't know. Some, someone's going to put in something here, which is going to be one of those ones that sound okay when you say it slowly, but as soon as you start saying it fast, you start saying expletives. And I'm going to get demonetized, so thank you very much. Does Mike Oxmall only sound weird with northern accents? Pheasant plucker. No, I'm, I'm, that's that's all I'm going with that one, Ben. All I'm going with that one. Uh, yeah, I think the yellow works in this this flat brown. <laughs> and you know, it's Christmas time. There's a lot of those uh, pheasant pluckers about. Don't think that's quite bright enough. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit in more intense with that. I don't think the the yellow is light enough to really make that part. I'm going to fall back on trusty trusty pale yellow, pastel yellow. Sorry. Red lorry, yellow lorry. That one gets me more than. She sells seashells by the seashore. Red lorry, yellow lorry. Red lorry, yellow lorry. Red lorry, yellow lorry. 
I think my favourite ones are the ones where you say them, say a word, and you sound like um, you say it normally in your normal voice, but then you sound like an um, like a, a certain nationality saying a different word. I can't remember what it is. I think one of them is. If you say something, it's like um, space space grills, and if you say space grills, you kind of sound like a Scottish person saying Spice Girls. I think it's it. Space grills, space grills. I'm just gonna mix a little bit of the uh, back to the painting. Flat brown with some pastel yellow. We're gonna get a nice. Kind of highlight color, mix a bit of water in there as well. So the only thing of this is kind of washes it out a little bit more, um, but that's fine. I can probably bring that back if I do a glaze with with a contrast paint, something like that. <laughs> Beats gone mad, everyone. Yeah, it kind of feels like that today. Just. This stream has been something else, guys. Something else. You're witnessing the, the live mental breakdown of Pete the Wargamer. Okay, I'm going to go for this one, I think. This is probably the best option. A little bit of flat brown and some pastel yellow. Gives me a bright edge. It kind of gives the appearance of like a faded leather as well, like a worn faded leather. Beer can is drink and saying bacon. Yeah, that's the kind of uh, pretty standard one. What if a random guardsman became a holy saint? Would that be a hard conversion for you? You know what? Actually, I think it wouldn't surprise me if there was already... Yeah, I suppose it would be difficult to do, really, because you've got certain... I think, was it Solar Macarius, the old... Um, the very old... Imperial Guard, um, kind of like Supreme Commander kind of thing. And he, I think he was kind of like a, a living saint, if I remember rightly. Lord Solar Macarius, I think it was. If my memory serves me well. I'm sure someone can quickly jump on Lexicanum or 40k Wiki, find out for me. I'm pretty sure he was. I am correct, thank you. I thought he was a saint, but yeah, so I'd basically just make him, and he was actually a really cool guy. The model was very old, but I think it was kind of like a... <laughs> I think it's it's not um, General Demolka, it's Honk if Thatcher's did. Honk if Thatcher's did. I too watch... Uh, watch Limmy. I watch Limmy on, on Twitch and, and YouTube. Um... Great, great stream. What are we? <laughs> yeah, you are now. I've I've pronounced certain words. I've said tongue twisters. So you can you can all go and check on wikis for me now. That is the price you pay. Okay, let's come back to this. Do some highlights on this as well. So this is looking a bit, a little bit flatter in colour than the straps are. Um, I might need to do some kind of recesses, recess kind of lining there, just to keep everything nice and bright. There we go. That'll do. Ben, I so pay for that pleasure. I'm wiki exempt. You are Ben. You don't have to go and uh, research things on the wikis for me. That's everyone else's job. Some nice fine highlights on these.
You painted some black, some black pots brown under the cross on the chest. Did I? Did I catch them? Ah, you did. I can't even see that myself. I will fix those out myself. Fix those in a second before I forget. Good spot. The trouble is I'm actually painting a lot further away than I'm used to here. I usually get like ridiculously close to the models. So being as far away from the model as I am here is actually unusual. I'm surprised I'm able to paint this at all, to be honest. Okay. Thanks for the spot. Um, Mike Figgy, thank you very much. I appreciate your help here. Let's get a little bit of black in there. If we can. Did you find a better position for the camera? I did, yeah, but I think um, I could get close to the model, but then I found that I would end up knocking the camera a little bit more, so it was like watching watching a stream during a an earthquake for you guys, so it was like Cloverfield. Cloverfield painting Warhammer experience. I mean to be fair, there's that many Cloverfield spin offs now. I wouldn't be surprised if one ends up being like a live stream in the future. Okay. Hopefully that's fixed it. Will the Blade God Ancient come out as standalone? I don't think there's anything just yet. Um, I can't remember looking. I think when we're looking at the the sprue, he was on the sprue with other models. So I'm not 100% sure, to be perfectly honest. And to be honest, actually, I'm fully expecting a big portion of the Indomitus set, the Space Marine side of things, to come out as a start collecting set or as a generic um, combat patrol box or whatever they end up doing now. And because I feel like they've produced that sprue and they've not included any other star sets and it's just, they've obviously spent a lot of money tooling that and actually making the molds for it. So I would be surprised if we don't see the, the Ancient being released separately. Miller's Miniatures, not knocking the 40k content you've been doing over the last few months, but any plans to do any more historical stuff? Your jobs in War of German Grenadiers and Perry's War of the Rose help me a lot. Yes, there is some um, stuff in the works. I have a little War of Games Spartan soldier here on, on the desk. He's going to be worked on at some point over the next few weeks. Um, I also have some of War of Games Victory at Seas, their kind of naval battleship game. Um, I'm going to be doing a ship from that, and I also have another Panzer, kind of a Panzer Grey tutorial in the works as well. Bunyip Studios, hiya, follow alert, not on. Hmm. I thought it was. I will, I will check that out. Thank you for the notification. Um, I will, I'll check that is working okay. I'm just terrible with Twitch. I do apologize, guys. I will get better. It's not really something I'm used to. I've been doing YouTube for like six years now, so I kind of know where I am with YouTube vaguely. Um, but yeah. Have you thought about doing audio books? No, I, I don't think... To be honest, after doing a few of these streams, I actually get a sore throat because I'm just not used to talking that much normally. Um, so... The thought of doing an audiobook just kind of fills me with the dread of feeling my throat's been cheese grated. Oh, what have I done there? I've really messed it up. Actually, I'm, I think I'm okay. I think, I think I fixed it. a little bit of a mistake that I made just down the center there. Clean that up. Perfect. The audiobook market is pretty saturated. I think what I could do is I could, I think I found a niche here though. 
Um, I think I could just basically read audiobooks of tongue twisters and would just just say an hour's worth of she sells seashells on the seashore and red lorry, yellow lorry and pheasant plucker. Uh, thanks for joining Yolanda. Um, I'm probably going to be finishing this up on the next next 10 minutes or so anyway. I think it's one of the longest streams that I've done actually. So I'm surprised I've kind of kept I've kept going for this long. But yeah. Let's finish off doing the leather and then we can call this a day. Let's add a little bit more of the pastel yellow to that mix that we had before. We're just going to create a nice kind of tan color here. You've probably asked and have answered the question a lot, but what's your preferred period to paint if doing historical? Easily um, World War II, easily, easily. I have a lot of interest in World War II anyway, so painting those kind of models is where I have a lot of background knowledge already, and I also have experience, and I just enjoy painting the models. The ones that I dislike the most are Napoleonics, and the reason for that is because their uniforms are so intricate. They have all these little intricate items on the uniforms, the colors are all specific to different eras and countries and units, and it's very difficult to get everything just right. I always find that World War II stuff is much easier, um, but Napoleonics is definitely the hardest, in my opinion. So again, I'm just using this as a, as a way to get like a more of an extreme highlight just to really help push the brightness of these areas. And it will really help to bring down how bright the, the black looks. I say bright, but it just it stops it looking gray, basically. Okay, let's go for the, the pouch as well. We can get the tops of these done. Little struggling as well. There we go. Genuinely quite sad that Pete's going to end the stream soon out for the next week. It's been a good stream, I, I agree. It has been a good stream, but I just need a little bit of time before I go to bed um, just to not do any painting. Um, I've got work tomorrow, so I want to make sure I'm bright and fresh for my last week at work. Um, I know what you mean, mate. That's why I love doing English Civil War, as there's limited information on colors, uniforms, and flag designs that you're not likely to be called out for being wrong. Yeah, I actually did do a couple of uh, English Civil War, and I actually find that's it's much easier to find information about it. I think it's partly because, um, as well as like in the UK at least, there's a lot of reenactment groups for English Civil War, so you can kind of just base it off theirs. I mean, there's probably a lot of reenactment groups for Napoleonics as well, but there's so many different variations and changes and things like that, and countries involved. English Civil War, you've just got two sides and different parts of the country, nice and easy. No worries, I'm on Twitch. Nice to see someone using Restream. I downloaded it a while ago and not used it. How are you finding it? Um, it's quite nice, actually. Um, it took a little bit of getting used to because you've got to, if you stream to um, Twitch and YouTube simultaneously, then you have to kind of set it up so that you use an existing scheduled stream. Otherwise, it just resets the settings and is a bit annoying in that sense. But the, the chat's quite good. I, I'm keeping the conversation going between... Twitch and YouTube with the restream bot and I've got like a nice little interface that I can see all the chat messages from YouTube and Twitch at the same time so yeah it's quite nice for that I'm enjoying it I'm just using the free version as well at the moment so yeah it's fine I have a question for you the bristles of my brushes split the top part of it anyway I'm not pressing them against the model would you recommend anything so personally that to me, sounds like you maybe have got some paint down in kind of the bottom of the bristles here. And what that's doing is kind of forcing the bristles apart because when they're put in here and they're glued in place, they're kind of glued in a way which makes them go to a point and it should only spread out otherwise. Either that or your bristles are a little bit, um, if you're using a natural fiber like this, 
you maybe have just kind of dried out the bristles. So grab yourself some brush cleaner first and see if that can help clean them out and get rid of any residual paint and help restore them. And if not, you might just need to get a new brush and just keep using this. But either way, grab yourself some of this, great stuff. I only got a 710 graphics card, would that handle it okay? Do you think, yeah, I think so. Um, I think it'll work okay. I used to be in an English Civil War Society, which was one of the two main reenactment groups, so I ended up having a lot of first-hand experience in the dress at the time, and likely colours of things. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I used to go to, there used to be a reenactment not far from where I used to live. Um, the Battle of Bloor Heath, they used to have like a, a reenactment every year, and I used to just go every single year with my dad, and it was always a really good time, and it's a shame really, because they kind of stopped doing it as I got older, and when I got into wargaming, they weren't really doing it as much. And I probably would have really enjoyed going there and using the uniforms and the costumes, well, not really costumes, are they? Kind of um, the clothing that people wore and, and recreating them, but they don't do it anymore, which is, uh, which is sad, really. So. Just gonna add a little bit of black down to the bottom here just to darken this. I think it went a little bit too bright, really. Okay, so what time now? Come up to nine o'clock now, so I think I'm going to just kind of call the stream there, guys. I think I've done everything I can for the um, for the leather for the time being, at least. I might go over again with maybe a glaze, but for the time being, I'm happy. Um, yeah, I will be completing this uh, painting over this week, and I will be um, showing you the full completed model on Friday when I release the conversion guide for this guy. And so, yeah, I'll see you all then. Thank you for everyone who's joined me over on YouTube, on Twitch. Um, I'm looking to use Twitch a little bit more. I'll be doing some gaming streams every now and again. So thank you. And yeah, thank you very much. for uh, um, Sachin probably won't be doing that again. I might do another stream in the week, but I'm hoping to get this finished off in the next couple of days. So probably won't do. I might paint something else instead. We shall see. So yeah, big thank you to everyone who's joined me so far. I will, um, if you haven't done so already, check out the Discord. If you're on YouTube, there should be a link to it in the description below. And thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon, who uses my affiliates links, anything like that. It is greatly appreciated. So yeah, thank you very much. I shall see you all in the next stream.